I'm going to identify the mechatronic and there are two plates. So basically this and this and they're separated by the separator plate. And see the number of one of the plate is this one. 1068 427237. This is the A side of the 063 separator plate. And here, this is the number of the other uh, part of the mechatronic. Number of the separator plate. This is the solenoids kit that I found. So this is the number they match by color and also this number matches with my numbers or the uh, valve body. But interesting thing is that the, uh, the uh, valve body is actually, it is uh, the F6 HP20 eight um, and it is the second generation of 6 HP 26 and all those numbers are uh, for the second generation but as I said previously in previous part of this video series um, the real OM says that it is the F6 HP 26 Z so I'm going to unmount the front prop shaft and see what's exactly I have um, on my uh, transmission. I'm going to unmount my prop shaft and this is not the only reason. Another reason is to is because you know see the U-joints here. I'm moving the wheel now. This prop shaft is dead and it is very dangerous to drive like that. It must be replaced basically immediately. So you see, so this is what I have here, and it is 6HP28X. In order to um, unmount the uh, solenoids, this whole plastic thing, which uh, which contains transmission control module, should be unmounted. And there are several bolts. All of the bolts are Torx 27. Uh, but seems like in this particular case uh, the numbers for the uh, valve body plates will be in the description in this case i need to unscrew this bolt this bolt those two and those two and seems like it is enough uh, i checked it from the other side and it looks like it so let's try it and those two. There is a manual for solenoids and basically this is the bolts that I unscrewed, six bolts. Here this is from uh, ZF kit with the solenoids. I'm going to pry it from here or from here and let's see how it goes. Okay, seems like um, solenoids are keeping it, so I will try it by hand. Kind of deattach it from here. Get it from here. It's kind of too high. Yeah. Okay, so I will take it apart for now. By the way, I cleaned those surfaces a bit and um, there was some metal dust and uh, I think it makes sense to clean it. But keep in mind that uh, be very careful and don't put anything in those channels. And in general, valve bodies should be cleaned by air 
and not by a rack or something like that. So in order to unmount the solenoid, um, I need to unscrew all those bolts. Here it is again, Torx 27. Once on the bolts, all the bolts are unmounted from here, this metal plate can be just upped like this. This part of the metal plate goes near the yellow solenoid. Okay, uh, the EDC1 solenoid, which is clutch A, I will try to remove it. Yeah. Okay, I checked all the solenoids um, and all of them have the same resistance, um, 5 ohm or around 5 ohm, so I think they are good. Uh, and resistance is completely the same for all of them. So um, this EDS1, it is the... I thought that something could probably wrong with it just because it is a clutch where I have higher uh, adaptation values and the second one it is torque converter um, it it controls pressure to the uh, torque converter clutch and it's also from electrical perspective it's good so at least from electrical perspective they're good but actually they are pretty complicated inside um, they can also lose pressure and a lot of other things like they can stuck in some position or something I know that we can test it using some special tools from Sonox, for instance, for pressure testing, but I don't have them and um, I just simply decided to replace them because there are many um, reviews in the internet that it helps, uh, especially with some intermittent issues. I drained the oil a bit from those holes. I haven't used rack here or something like that just because it's not a good idea to clean mechatronic with rack. Probably you can clean those surfaces like I did, but in general people use air and um, be careful, don't use rag here a lot. The ordering is like orange-orange, blue-yellow-yellow, blue-yellow. It comes with some oil already, so um, oil is on the seals here, so just put it there uh, like this, screw it a bit there like this, make sure that oil is on the seals and you need to push it and you need to push it with pretty significant amount of force here so basically if you move it like that and then probably kind of like this so I, I now I'm sure that it stays there just because it kind of clicked but see it still can move there just a bit and again I kind of wiggle it a bit and wiggle and kind of rotate it a bit and push like this and now it's there this is the torque converter clutch one It should be installed uh, from this side, like this. I'm going to check the resistance of all the solenoids, and it should be around 5 ohm. But keep in mind that this um, this guy is not so precise. So. My old, all of them showed 6.8 ohm. Okay, 6.8, the same. 
which means five. Okay, 6.7. Point So it means that all the solenoids are good. 6.8 here means something around 5 ohm, which is great. And it is completely the same what I got on those um, solenoids. So it means that from electrical perspective, they both are good. But anyway, let's see if, if it helps with my issues. So the next step is to install the electronics here the control module and um, basically I cleaned it with the rack. I know that some people clean this uh, also, they unmount it, but in this case I decided to keep it there just because in order to move it out I need to remove uh, this pin from here which, which, which is something that I don't want to do. Also make sure that this part, this round part, goes here, it is very important. Um, and basically that's it so i'm ready for installation and i haven't torqued the plate which keeps the solenoids just because um, they are going to move a bit and i don't want to limit their movement i saw that some people torque them later so it's okay Make sure that it's not visible, but it should fit properly. And by the way, also those pins here and here, they should go in the special places. Okay, so now pins are on their places, I move this so that it is in the proper position and now I need to kind of push it and make sure that the contacts are going to fit the um, the valves not the valve but solenoids okay. One of them was not exactly in the needed position. Okay. And that's it. Now it sits in the position and all the solenoids are connected there. Bolt is here.
make sure here that the retaining plate is uh, matching with the solenoids. Let's see how it looks like. This plate is very important because it keeps the solenoids in place because there is a pretty pretty significant pressure. Okay. Probably you're thinking about cleaning the contacts of the solenoids, so it's not needed. Just because uh, there is no, uh, you know, any kind of seals, right? And anyway, all that stuff, it is contacts with the oil and it is completely okay. This is uh, how that piston should look like. So you see, this thing should be connected with it. When you install the control module, you know, all that plastic, be aware of that. I have visually inspected them and no issues at all, uh, except the color is not a bit, I mean, it's still good color, but not the same like new. Um, so here they have some numbers. This is the yellow one. This is the orange one. Also what I noticed, this is the manual and they say to reset adaptations before a solenoid's replacement, but I'm going to do it after. I don't think it's, it's a problem, but also they say that there may be a somewhat poorer gear change quality in the next 3-4 weeks until the quality has become adapted again by way of the adaption. I will keep that in mind. My mechatronic is M-shift here. By the way, this is the schema of the mechatronic bolts that needs to be unscrewed. T40. And this is the schema of the bolts that keep the control module.